We are here to talk about design and workflows and how tools like it's Sketch and Setline can help us improve our working process. Uh, my name is Anilu. You can contact me uh, by Twitter. That is my um, link, Anikoto. I will answer there if you have any questions. I, I am a web designer. I end up doing uh, Drupal development and, and site building almost by casualty. I wasn't looking for it, but the company I was working for had this huge project to migrate an old uh, website to this new CMS. It was a website building in 2010, so they didn't use any, any CMS. And well, I love Drupal. And I ended up doing some site building, front end, project management, and uh, like trying to connect all these things uh, is pretty important for me because uh, sometimes we, we just run into the work and never think about this. And it's a good opportunity to talk about that. <coughs> okay, why? I work with the sketch. Um, I found this new tool like four years ago, uh, and everybody was talking about it. And I say, well, why, why not? It looks great. Uh, but the first time I opened Sketch, I found this. It was pretty much like Photoshop, but nothing at all the same. <laughs> so the first week or two weeks, I was trying to figure out the comments and creating the content and it was really like frustrating. Um, then I found out uh, these templates. They're awesome. I don't know if you have using a sketch already or you haven't, but playing with those basic templates helped me understand how a sketch is working. So I start using this and what I love it is they have the documentation of the template right here. You open it and you have, oh, this is how this works. I also find out that it's really flexible tool that is really fast, really, really fast. Like Doing a change in Photoshop took me like two days, and in this I can do it in one hour. And because it's HTML, uh, you can install tons of plugins really, really easy. You can develop your own plugins, you can install your libraries, and it could be integrated with the development process. Another thing that I found out is it works with atomic design. That is something I learned at the school, but actually never use it. But because the sketch is built in this way, I start using atoms, molecules, organisms, and whatever I need to build the website. Sometimes I do more scalability if the project is too big, like creating elements uh, before atoms. Sometimes I need to create pages because the client uh, asks or like final design with real content, so sometimes I don't. Just work with the wireframes and choose a couple of images. Uh, if you don't know about this, don't worry. I'm gonna explain it like later with the, the tool. Then I find out Zeppelin that works amazing with a sketch to share your templates, your design through the web. So Zeppelin is a web-based application. Um, you can have something like this. Uh, here you have people invited to your project. You have all your um, layouts, all your designs, and you can have comments, you can tags, you can do a lot of things um, here. One of the most important is this is not a screenshot. This is actual HTML. So you can know which font I'm using, the size, 
and how this should be uh, like the distance between one and another element without having to start Photoshop. It's pretty cool. Another thing that I found that not many people use because I'm sharing this with developers and nobody is using this. I put a lot of comments and notes for them to like, this should be like that. This is a content. This is not content. You should, this icon should be there all the time or whatever I figure out they may have questions about. I put those comments. Sometimes nobody answer <laughs> to the comments, but I hope they are using it. Um, another amazing thing is, is for free. You can have one project, uh, as many invited people as you want for free. If you want to scale, scale the project, you can have three or four designers. Each one could handle one project and everybody can collaborate there. Uh, if you have money to put on this, you can make it grow. But it's amazing. So I want to show you uh, like the tool on life. But before that, um, what I was talking about, usually a, a project, um, somebody will like do the discovery and pass this information to the designer. Sometimes the designer is into the discovery process that was really ideal. And pass the project to the developer. The developer doesn't know anything about what was happening before. And then somebody has to maintain the project. Uh, this gets more complicated in real life. We have sell people that made the discovery. Um, content creation that should be a start when we are starting with the design because the designer need like real content but this is usually doesn't happen and at the end when we think we should be maintaining the project somebody is uh, redesigning the thing because the content has an end so what is my point here our workflow should be agile to like designers should be working on an agile team not separated from them uh, we should have a sprint and we have like basic uh, design at the beginning and more complex task at the end and it should be with the maintain of the project a little bit longer than just the first month or two. So that is my idea of um, workflow that have the designer integrated with the, the project. That's not always possible. But okay. Oh, sorry, this is not what I wanted. We are going to see now a sketch. So, this is a tool. I have a basic um, template here for web design. They give you this for a start, like out from a sketch. You have this basic components that will give you an idea of what you should have on your project. Um, your um, titles here, they are um, actually here. You have all the basic elements you will need to um, configure your content, your text, basically. And you can update these during the project, but when you start with your wireframes, you probably won't need any of that. You just need to insert a text here. Um, this is my hero title and apply these styles here. So let's make each one. And another text here you should have 
like some Lauren Ibsen. And this should be your body. Like this one. So that easy you will have like your first wireframes. Now you can change this and somebody says, okay, this should be uh, smaller, 16, and you change the color. And you can update from here your text style. And all the wireframes you have been working on, they now have your actual style. If you okay, um, if you go okay, so I don't know if you have ever used a sketch. Yes, you you have a few. No. no. Okay, so probably this is too fast for you. <laughs> Let's open a new file. I can, yeah, I'm opening just a, a blank file. This is what I found the first time. I'm going to insert an artboard, and now we can choose which kind of artboard are we working into. Uh, let's say we are working on a Mac. Oh, this is a touch bar, but it's the same size. Well, if that is not what you're looking for, you change the name, website, home page, and you set up this, the dimensions. So now you have your artwork. And I'm gonna need another one because we want this to be responsive. And I'm going to use, I have to change the device, Android, and use it. Pixel 3, well, this should be updated because Pixel 3 is kind of old now. And don't do that. If you want to change the size, do it here, so you have the Exact dimensions for your new device. Now you have a Pixel 3 homepage. So here I have my page 1 or homepage. And I can have all my designs for this homepage in the same page. I don't have to be looking for it. I'm going to insert here a shape that is going to be my hero. Okay. And create us a symbol. Here's where we start with the atomic design. Now I have pages, and those pages are going to be composed by the smaller parts that are symbols. Um, this is going to be my hero. And the system, it doesn't create me my page, but I'm going to create a symbol page where I'm going to have all my symbols. And this hero, I'm going to throw with it here. There I have it. Have my hero here, and I don't have my hero here. Okay, I deleted. Sorry, it's not working. I as how I thought. Um, I have. Uh, I'm going to insert the symbol I just created, the hero. So I will go here. Where is the plus document hero? And now I have my hero here. And I'm going to copy this and paste it, sorry, 
on the pixel 3. So if I resize this hero, that we could say it will be an image, and I press shift, it's going to do re resize like on proportions. But we are losing all this that is here on the right. What I should do is use this resizing tool to fix the position of this element. So if I click here and I'm changing the side of my website, let's say this is a tablet, I can have the focal point of my image in between. Um, I can do it also like fixing the top of the bottom depending what I want. As a designer, this is important for me. Maybe a developer won't see it, but if the information is here, it's easier to tell them I want this to work like this. And I don't need to have one design for web uh, screen or like uh, computer screen size or white screen size or a tablet. I could have them all here and just change the window size and export my designs. The same will happen with the with the mobile. If I resize this and I have the hero in the middle, I could do it wider and I have, oh sorry, I didn't check this here. If I'm doing it wider or narrow, we have the image. Sorry, it's not working. Probably because I'm a little nervous here. <laughs> so that is the idea, that you can uh, fit the position of the object in the screen when you are working with this. So let's go back to my wireframes. So here I have this document with uh, my simple wireframes that we were working to. And I have already a library with a lot of different symbols. To work with. So let's say I want to put here a button, uh, one of those buttons that I have here. I just have to click and drag it up and if I need uh, to create more of this, let's say it's going to be a, a card, we are going to create another symbol and we call these molecules. So a molecule is a group of atoms that make more complex the design. Uh, in Drupal we call this a block or a paragraph or a layout now that we are talking about layouts. So I have here my molecule and let's go back if I double click here, we are working on this on the same. I don't know why I cannot drop this here, maybe for the screen, but. Okay. Now I can have two of these. one next to each other and if I change this like put it down there and move my text lower and let's say I need a subtitle Forget what is this. Is. 
and go back to the inside I was working right here. Now I have two molecules with the same change. What can also can do is don't change my molecule but change only this instance because I want to show to the client that I have uh, a bottom that, that could be disabled, like this one. So I don't have to create uh, another component for this. I just reusing the same. Also, I can start adding content here. Um, this is my subtitle. And this is, uh, a sketch is able to do this because it's in HTML. So all these fields are, like in Drupal, editing content. And when you, when you go forward, you can install plugins that here, you can put, for example, names of a city. Well, this is the bottom, sorry. In the subtitle, I'm gonna click this little button here and using the sketch libraries to change this for cities or names. Um, if you want to create a library, you will need a new file. you insert your artboard. Let's say we are gonna do an icon library here in the sketch. And our icons are gonna be 32 pixels by 32 pixels. And what I have to do is just import here, let's do this, all my SVGs Is going to do this with three of those. We designers love to work with SVGs, but we know Drupal is not so good handling SVGs. So what I can do is create this library. I'm going to create a symbol here. change the name oh. okay. I need to copy my at our words There another icon. Okay. And create the symbols. So I have this, I'm going to save it, and the only thing that I have to do is go to uh, sketch preferences libraries, add a new library, 
and any uh, sketch file that you have done with images, blocks, um, tools, whatever you have like components in Drupal that you use all the time, you can have it here and you can import your custom library. And it's enabled. And now, wherever I have a small icon, I'm going to insert a new artboard here. Call this icon, and I can have it here. All the libraries that I have been using, just like my book that I just created. If I go back, I can insert the here. Sorry, I'm not seeing it. Do we call it icon? Yeah, this this is not a symbol. Maybe symbol. Okay, now it is a symbol. We go back, call insert in our document. Our icon is here. And as well as I can change the text, I can check change this symbol from my custom library and use whatever I have created for this project. And if I go here and change the size for this and go back, the size of all the icons that I have used in the whole project are changing. Okay, I think that is by talking about uh, a sketch icons and how do we manage uh, assets. Um, Can you do your overrides on a molecule? So for that example where you overrode Beijing, it's not going to affect the rest of those elements that you didn't override, like warm or anything? Is that no, correct? No, yeah. they're not going to be affected. It's like if I change here, I fix this subtitle and I go back. I have Beijing and I have subtitle and it would work. If I want to reset this, I can go here to the symbol and look for molecules. And no, this is not work. I just have to copy and paste again and always reset. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk to you about is this is really easy to do. So now I have two icons here. I have menu and I have icon. Uh, but this list over here of all my symbols are going to be growing and growing. So I would like to do these small menus so I can find all the icons that I have created. And this is really, really easy. Just change the name with a space, a slash, and set bold or text icon, oh, icon space slash text icon, and I have my text icon and menu, I go change the name with icon slash menu, and now when I want to insert my icon, I have them both under the menu. This is really, really easy to do. So,
So let's go back. Now let's say I want to export this to my uh, sublime project. The only thing I have to do is install, install sublime plugin and go to plugins and I have sublime here. If it's the first time you are doing this, he's gonna ask you to create an account. I already have my account set up. So if I export selected, uh, since I have to say first, then I can choose the project that I'm working with. Uh, let's, let's do this simpler. And now, if I go to my subline, I can use the desktop app or the web app. I'm using the des desktop because, well, I don't know, the internet was going to be fast enough. And I have here my wireframes and the design that I already have on my project. Now, I, what I want to do is go here and add some tags. So, we're gonna say this is a wireframe and create this tag. And this is so easy. And we're gonna say this is desktop. And I have two tags. You have, have more tags, let's say like login, enable, I can do that and done and go back. This will take a little bit of time, but it's less time using this that like trying to explain to a developer that this I have the design and this is the login and this is the other one. And I have I can go to this wireframe and share the web link on Asana or any tool that you use to share your task with the developer saying like, here, there is a design that I'm using for this task. So I'm gonna add here, wireframe tag to, and say mobile. I'm gonna create this other tag and going back to my dashboard. And the idea is you will have every design that you have made for this project will be here. And when I want to wash my wireframes, I just have to click the tag. And if I want to go to the mobile, I just go to this. And this is pretty easy. Um, I don't know if you have any questions. I have plenty of time. It was too fast, or was good. Have you, so somebody mentioned Envision earlier, and yes. so we currently use Sketch and Envision for mockups, and then our developers look at our mockups in Envision mm -hmm. and style guides in Sketch and kind of use that for, I don't know if you, have, if you had experience in Envision, do you prefer Zeppelin? Uh, can you do mockups in Zeppelin, I guess is my first question? Yes. You can. Uh, you can't do mockups in Zeppelin. Uh, you will do mockups on a sketch uh -huh. and export it to Zeppelin. Okay. Uh, what I have used uh, in Vision 2, but what I will do is have my design in a sketch as export to Envision to do like client reviews and user experience design testing and have Zeppelin at the same time. So I will have like three different instances of my uh, work, but kind of I will have different communication channels with the client and with the development team, but I will have the same prototype for both of them. It's not duplicated information, it's just two, two ways to look at it. Yeah, and your designers are happy designing in, in Vision? Or are you working in a sketch and exporting to Envision? Yeah, design and sketch for sure. We prefer it over XD and anything yeah, else and that we've used. Um, we really use sketch. The sketch files are opened by our developers and they do the inspecting in there to see what the styles are, colors, and we'll organize symbols the way that you've done it with the slash to keep. Uh, we'll even do colors as symbols. 
in Sketch and do color slash blue, color slash green, and that way we can update color sidewalk too. It's not just you know for design elements. So we haven't used Zeppelin to talk back and forth between designers and developers. We've just used Sketch to communicate between designers and developers and Envision to demonstrate the user experience. Okay, we have also in Zeppelin a uh, starlight. I didn't okay. show you this. Great. But let's go back to uh, a sketch. So what I have here, if I decide to, my hero is now going to be yellow. Let's remove the borders and just choose like kind of yellowish color, whatever. Here. I have two different things here. I can have global colors. It's like if my company, it's like working for a company and manage five websites and all the websites are using the same color palette, I will use my global colors. But if I'm working for a, a company that have few clients with different colors, I will use my document colors and add this color to my palettes. Now I have four colors here, and if I go and edit my symbols that I have here, I could change this for this color. And if I go to set line, I can export my colors. I'm going to continue. I always forget to save to my project. And now I have one more color to my color palette. And I can do the same with text. I have text styles here. I will have all the different text styles I'm using for this project in one single place. So what we do before is create this huge PDF with all the guidelines and the designer will spend a whole week doing this documentation for the development team. And two weeks after, this document will be uh, old and already, like, no, nobody will look at it again because you don't want to have the old information. This is lifetime. This is real. This is day-to-day -day, uh, stuff. Uh, so it's better to do reference to this document or this website. Yeah. So what do you think? Like it? I, I don't do design, but I'm getting pretty this back for my design team, and I'm sure they like it. Yes, it's that, that was one of the ideas of this uh, conversation is like a project manager or a, a company, a, a Drupal company can ask their designers to do those things. Um, like if I'm going to export all the icons for for the development team, I can do just click here and export. Make this export all thing. If you want to change the size because you are have retina displays clients, you will do it here. And a lot of time I found developers that are trying to cut an icon because they find that the size of the icon is not the, the right size for the view or for the, the, the screen size that they are working on. And you should ask for these things <laughs> to a design. It's too easy for me to do it, but yeah. It, it wasn't easy in Photoshop or any other tool. Now we have this. That's what they're using now. <laughs> what, your designers are using Photoshop style? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were, we're about the same time frame as you, about four years ago. We moved from Photoshop to Sketch and it's probably cut our design time in half. Wow. Yeah, yeah. that's really, really Yeah. You were talking the other day about Sketch for the tweak, is that still a thing? Is going to be a thing? It's not. I haven't looked about it, but it was a project to build a plugin where a sketch can export tweak templates. 
that can be used in pattern lab. So that will be huge. By just having your designers working in pattern lab and you just connect this thing to Drupal. And you it's just one step to have the front end done. Yeah. Yes, this that will be awesome. Um get one thing we were talking about. Uh, okay, let's let's see this another, another example that I have here. I have this model design. I create here um, a folder with some files. I have an image, a couple of texts, and I have here this avatar. This avatar have an image. So I can choose the image right from my document, go to resource, and I have here, change this. The only problem is I need to have all my assets cut in the same size. So if I'm going to have uh, people pictures, they all should be 200 by 200, and I have landscapes, they all should be the same size. So. I would have to go to my atoms here and actually change the proportion of the avatar so it will fit the new the new images I'm using. But I also have here I create the, the structure I have atoms molecules. So this here is already a molecule. So if I copy this here and move it, move it to another page. I can go and change some of these listing elements. Uh, let's say, oh sorry, sorry. Let's say we we change this text uh, or here. Say home. And like it, and return. If I have two pages with the same molecule, I have the change in both. And the only thing that I have to do is to create like more granularity on my elements and organizing on, on the pages. Um, something else. Uh, plugins. Yes. There's thousands and thousands of plugins in um, a sketch. One of the really useful ones is like dummy images or dummy text. You can solve like a Lauren Ibsen plugin that you can change in your assets, your text, uh, your images, let me see. Replace with the field image. Install this plugin. I'm sorry. I don't know how this works. So just very easy. So the idea was to there is a plenty of uh, plugins you can install to use dummy content, and you can find everything you need here on the sketch web website.
I'm not the expert using a sketch. There are tons and tons of things that you can uh, learn from internet. You can go here. And down here you have your plugins. This is the, the learning center yeah. documentation. And you have all the extension, extensions. They have a few ones that are like kind of uh, part of the uh, sketch project. And you have tons of them that are uh, open source or uh, small projects adding functionalities to Sketch. So if you look here for learning Ibsen, no, Ibsen, you will find out that there are like 12 or 10 different uh, plugins that, that could add uh, learning Ibsen uh, DOMI content to your designs. Each of those uh, needs a different installation process depending on when they develop this uh, plugin. Some of them you will need NPN to install or just double click and it will install itself. Uh, but most of them have a GitHub uh, project and they will give you the install steps. So you can install those and you can have how is what what I was showing you uh, here? Your Sorry. <laughs> well, uh, I think this is all for now. Uh, I keep the homework to find out how to use the learning uh, plugin that I installed to create the content. I, I forget. I have like a, a year without using the tool, but I thought it was important to share this with you guys. So, thank you.